Welcome. I'm Kinetic Symphony. I hunt down and report on weird and true mysterious stories, from glitches to the paranormal. Case file number 1591, written by Seeker of Truth only, the hidden grid of reality. It all started off when one time I woke up from a very strange lucid dream. I may go into that dream some other time, but I don't know if it's relevant to this post. And when I woke up, I saw a grid around everything in my room for a second. I think it may have been light green in color. I did not have sleep paralysis when I woke up and saw the grid. Another time I had been awake for a while and was just scrolling through Reddit when I looked up at the white wall of my room and noticed a grid around one area. This grid was dark gray in color. I have seen the dark gray twice while looking at a section in my room. However, I feel like the grid is everywhere and if you focus hard enough on it, it is visible. I have seen the grid twice in a way where it was not blurry or faded. However, I can see the grid a lot in my day to day life. It is usually more faded. So I would have to focus more on it to notice it, but it is there. Even right now I can see it, but it is more faded. If you want, you can try to see it too. It is more obvious than a white wall in a room that is not super bright. By the way, I don't even meditate to see it. I also do not have any medical or mental conditions that would result in hallucinations. Case Notes of 1591 The Hidden Grid of Reality So I've mentioned this before, but I have a condition called Visual Snow, and if you don't know what that is, it's a condition where, for all of my existence 24-7, even when I close my eyes, or actually no, when I sleep, in my dreams I don't see it, but anytime I'm conscious, so 16-7 I guess, <laughs> I see this persistent field of static. The best analogy is to a TV screen with static on it, one of those old TV screens if you remember. Only the dots are much smaller, but they, they still have the same erratic fluctuation, like they're popping in and out, but they're so tiny. You can almost ignore it, you certainly get used to it, even though it is somewhat annoying. But it's basically an oscillating filter of static in front of my vision forever. It's not enough to block my vision, especially in bright areas. But outside at night, or indoors if there's not much light, then it's all I see, really. So then there are stories like this, where people are seeing a grid. Sometimes in the sky, sometimes on walls. And it makes me wonder, is this visual snow that apparently 2% of people have, seeing the fundamental nature of reality? At the base layer, there's just the quantum foam, this oscillating sea, this ocean of virtual particles that pop into existence and then cancel each other out. Is that what I'm seeing? Maybe it is just the overactive part of my visual processing center in my brain. I also have tinnitus, which is just hearing a ringing. It's not very loud, but it's still annoying if things are very quiet. Basically, my base layer for processing visuals and sound is always active, when it shouldn't be. If there's nothing coming in, I'm still hearing and seeing stuff. Am I hearing and seeing stuff that is baseline in the universe, or is it just my brain being wonky? <laughs> Who knows? Case file number 1592, written by Agent X Leavening. My aunt's unnatural smile. This one is different and still makes me wonder every now and then when I think about it. I was young, maybe 12. I live in a trailer park that at the time was only a circle. My house is inside at about 3 o'clock if you can picture it as a circular clock. I was riding back near my driveway when I saw a familiar car. This car was the same blue car that my aunt drove. I remember hoping it was my aunt because I loved company. Here's where it turns strange. As she is passing, I do see that it was my aunt and she is staring straight on. But as she passes, she turns and makes the creepiest smile I've ever seen. At the time it happened, I thought it was just a funny joke she was playing. She keeps driving though. So I decided to be smart and cut through the middle of the park to the other side of the circle and cut her off to see if she actually is going to be stopping at the house. I can see all her cars until I have to go through one of the neighbor's yards where one of the houses blocks my view. I should have been able to see her pass again, but once I reached the road, she was nowhere to be found. If she did somehow get to the end of the park and turn to the main roads, I would have seen it as she would have had to drive in front of my vision. I walked around the park a few times to see if I could come up with anything but couldn't figure it out. She claims to have never driven through the park that day, and I'm still creeped out by the smile and how it all seemed to vanish. Case Aunt Sophia, 1592, My Aunt's Unnatural Smile Yeah, so creepy old ladies is a trope in horror stories, and for a good reason. 
It is terrifying. You know, the grandma in the forest offering cookies and really she means ill intent. To have anything similar manifest in real life, I can't imagine it. I mean, I know my own grandma, sadly past now, if she behaved in a way that was creepy, offsetting, <laughs> it would stick with me and I would never forget it. Even if she did vanish later on, you'd ask you, you still ask yourself questions about it. Case file number 1593, written by Enjoyer of Cheese. That's just evil. The Cart Swap Conundrum. When I was seven or eight years old, I went with my dad to the grocery store. It was a giant, for you Mid East Coast people. As I was following my dad around the store, I decided I would hold onto the side of the cart with my hand, close my eyes, and let the cart guide me around the store blind. It seemed like a fun idea at the time, and I'm sure it was a fun idea for a seven year old. Anyway, my new game is going well. Dad's pushing the cart around. I'm in step with the cart, grasping its metal cage, carefully going round turns and up and down the aisles, all without opening my eyes. After what seemed like a while of this game, I decided I would open my eyes. I don't know what made me decide to stop playing, but I opened my eyes, looked down at my hand, still firmly grasping the cart, and I realized there wasn't much in the cart itself which didn't make sense given that we had been in the store a while, and I knew we had walked down multiple aisles. When I turned to look up at my dad pushing my cart, I was shocked. Pushing the cart was an old Indian woman. My dad is a white guy, and what appeared to be her granddaughter. Both were staring at me with confused looks. I was terrified and didn't know what to do. I let go of their cart and walked away as casually as I could, but I'll never forget the look of confusion on their faces. I wandered around the store looking for my dad frantically for several minutes, asking myself how I ended up on another cart when my hand never let go of my dad's cart. All I could think of was my dad passed the cart onto the Indian family as a joke, and they played along. When I finally found my dad, he didn't know what I was talking about. He thought I had wandered off and was frantically looking for me. Case also file 1593, the cart swap conundrum. I don't think I can explain this one. Even if we adopt the idea that it really was just a prank by your dad, it doesn't explain how he was able to remove your hand that was always firmly grasping the cart and then place it on this stranger's cart. And you know, why wouldn't they be laughing if it was a prank? They would be in on it too. And how would the, your dad organize it without talking to the people? Scribble notes or something to them? Doesn't seem possible. Of course, none of this seems possible. <laughs> it's just a true glitch. It's almost like you hit a space-time portal, and it brought you to the cart with them, but they would see you pop in, your dad would have seen you just pop out instantly. No way. <laughs> this is a true glitch, which I have no explanation for. Now time for the joke of the day. I told my girlfriend she drew her eyebrows too high. She seemed surprised. <laughs> There's a joke about this in Seinfeld. I think it's Jerry's nephew or uncle? No, it's his uncle, I think. He loses his eyebrows, so then he draws them on. And he perpetually looks surprised. It's really funny in the, in the sitcom. <laughs> I think it wasn't him. I think someone else drew them on or something like that. It's a really funny episode. <laughs> like the video, subscribe, hit the bell. Connect Symphony signing off.